Hello, everybody. We have a code review session, but this time potluck focused. It's a build out session. You know, we got our builder vest on. You know, we got the got the got the custom swag coming off the potluck potluck build out HQ host ETH Denver. And yeah, I'm I'm uh I'm really happy to have Elliot. You know, build out council build out boss OG. Um, going over a little bit about building potluck on boss he just did a major refactor if you might have noticed potluck was very slow and now it's faster and yeah elliot elliot was involved in that heavily and so um yeah elliot if you want to introduce yourself hey yeah what's up it's elliot um with build dow working on everything going to work on this potluck refactor talk about the current code base talk about uh, what's improved, how to improve it, and how you can do this in your own applications. Cool. Should we get started? Yeah, yeah. And can you kind of go over like um a little bit how you approach? Because you were coming to this as uh like there was already an existing code base. You were coming into it like not really knowing the contracts and like looking at the code. So how did you begin to understand uh what potluck was from your own and uh. And then, yeah. And then what were like the problems you immediately recognized? Because you, you basically saw that it was slow and then wanted to optimize it. And so uh, can you talk about that? Yeah. So Potluck, Potluck kind of like uh, all centers around this this one app. So if you were to check out the code base, you'll see this, um, it'll open up a boss workspace and you'll see this big project with a lot of different components into it. And you kind of don't really know where to start. That start is this index.jsx, um, which as you can see, is pretty big. So if we explore Potluck, I have it on legacy, or let's actually do, let's do one that's out right now. Um, if you explore it, you'll, you'll notice like kind of a few things. Um, one, we the screen flashes right at the beginning, um, when we scroll, you can see that the, the scroll bar is massive, and that's because we've just loaded all of the data all at one time. So there's no infinite scroll here. As you scroll, the screen disappears because it's unable to render. When we navigate, um, you'll see that the entire page refreshes. Nothing stays static. It looks like we've got some issue here. Um, yeah, and as you explore, you'll just notice that like every single thing is is refreshing, and you'll see the little uh, dots that are trying to render the widgets, and it just it it takes a while. Um, so when approaching potluck, we're trying to think like uh, one how to make it how to make it smoother, but also in order to do that, it's like how can you make things as static as possible? How can you make aspects of the page not change that don't have to. So as we navigate, the navigation bar doesn't need to change, but we see that it's it's refreshing. If we look at the code, when you pull it locally, you see this big, long index file, which is where all this navigation, everything is occurring. And you'll notice that we have a lot of functions. There used to be a whole lot more. Um, all this functionality that is here that seems to be where like the components that are on the page are communicating all the way back up to the root and then are telling it to refactor so or are telling it to re-render so there might be a state update that's happening i don't know within this when you click the donate button and then that state update is traveling all the way up to the index um in order to render a modal and that's like not very necessary so really, we want to try and split out as much of this functionality as we can to isolate it into only the places that we need to, and ultimately to make it so that the app, the index file is unchanging, does not use state, um, stuff like that. So if you were to pull, I have locally, I've got, um, I've got potluck pulled, I've got two apps, I've got the legacy one, which is right here. Let's actually rename it. Legacy. So this is what is on potluck.org right now. What's rendering highlights a bit of those issues. 
And then I also have uh, potluck.near, which is this refactor I did that it render it. We'll see it renders faster. Our thing is slower. We're going to have to fix this right here. But as you notice, as we're navigating through the pages, this is staying still. And then the only thing that's that's rendering is what's below. We'll fix this right here in a bit. We can talk about that. But that's like that is one. Uh, that's one improvement that we do. As well as um potluck integrates with all these different sdks so we want to before those sdks we used to like define functions here like as you can see we defined functions in order to communicate with these sdks like the registry contract the donor contract um the pot contracts uh rather than defining these functions and passing them in from the root we can just find modules that can then be imported like you would in regular JavaScript development. You can just import the module and use the contract functionality that you need right then. So that good enough? I think we could uh, start, go ahead and get into maybe some steps in this refactor. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. So as I've mentioned, I've got, I've got two different Print. Uh, I've got the legacy. I've got what's currently active. That's going to be in Potlock, and then I've got in Potlock .near, This is the new refactor. It also uses a newer version of Boss Workspace, um, so we're able to do aliases for different environments. So mainnet, testnet, and staging. Um, and then we are also able to do replacements. So we can, for example, inside of it. Instead of writing potluck.near inside of here, we can write config account. So in the current one, we define this owner ID in the root and then we pass it as a prop to, to all the way inside. With boss workspace, we can instead just have this be a replacement that happens on a build step. So if you have an app that's doing that and you're migrating to boss workspace, all you have to do is you can just like wherever owner ID is being used, we can just search it. Maybe look for potluck.near. And we can replace it with config slash account. Nice. Let's make sure that that works. There you go. So we pretty much have the full the same functionality as before, um, but now it's it's using replacements rather than um, this prop being passed everywhere. So that's step one. Step two is in this index file. You'll see here that we like we have some components here. We have a theme. We have our net bar theme that really shouldn't be here. Um, some business specific logic that shouldn't be here as well. A modal that shouldn't be here, and another modal that shouldn't be here. So I've already done this part of the refactor, which now we've replaced it to just like a single app view that is instead populated by this app module that takes in this object where we define a standard layout, which has a header, content, and a footer. 
So we define our header, we move over our components nav bar from the other place. It used to be right here. Now we're passing it into this static layout. So it doesn't have to be updated every single time. We define our route. So this is similar to like Next.js where you define what they point to. And that's how we're able to do stuff like uh, page equals project. Oops. Oh, tab equals project. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, so we've replaced the routing that was occurring in here that had to always it always use state. Um, where now we have it so that it comes from parameters. As we navigate, you see that the parameter changes and this parameter gets passed into this thing called the app module, which inside of it, maybe I could open up. Um, yeah, let me let me find something really quick. this over okay Why is this here? Okay. So hmm. we can talk about how this how this new index, so this app folder right here replaces index. And pretty much what it's done is just kind of migrated a lot of this um, code that's here. You'll see that like we have all these like variables that kind of get passed around to ultimately just determine what the content of the page is, what widget should be rendered. So this is supposed to be like hotluck.near slash widget profile detail. It's just saying that this is a route. This profile tab is a route. If you go to tab equals profile, it's supposed to render this. 
And instead of going in this like roundabout way, we've simplified it where we just define our route here where if tab, this parameter is equal to profile here, then we're gonna render profile.detail. So this is the same exact code on both sides, or it does the same exact thing, but we just kind of like simplified it and abstracted it away. This config, this router config, gets passed into this component called the every.near widget app view, which follows this app pattern. Inside of app view, we take in this configuration and we take in the layout that we've defined. So we've defined a standard layout. We pretty much use modules to grab this layout, render it, and we're going to keep it. We're going to keep it static, meaning that we're not going to re-render it each time. Um, and then this router is going to handle uh, the rest of it, the resolution. So in it, we define that the parameter is tab, and these are the routes. So the router will then catch, and it'll see that if a prop equals tab, it knows to render. It it looks through uh, the routes. and it renders the active widget, um, which should be, yeah, the profile or whatever. It's pretty much just uh, this idea that, you know, every uh, every app is mostly the same. It has multi-pages. You want to be able to route between things. It has some sort of parameter in the, in the navigation that's determining that. And we can just abstract that all away so that you just have to define your JSON and, um, we handle the rest. Let's see. So another thing that we do is SDKs. We used to define these functions in the in the root, and then we would pass them down uh, into the components that need it. And now we've just defined like a SDK. We have this VM require module, which is an object that returns the functions that you need. So now, like typical JavaScript, you can just import this module and you can just use the, the functions as you need them. Now, before, we were using SDKs, but we kind of, we would pass this environment variable, whether or not it was staging or not. And that determines what the contract ID is. And because of that, that's why there might be some red flashes that happen on the UI. Um, we, for example, when we're trying to use the SDK, like right here, we import the SDK and then we create a new one. We, we instantiate it. And while sometimes this VM require will take a couple of attempts in order to actually query and get the module from on chain. And if it takes too long, then this will be null. And then we'll get errors saying that get contract ID is not defined. I'm sure if we go on potluck right now and we refresh, we'll probably find one of these errors somewhere. No, not really. But we can improve this too because we ultimately environment is de is determined at build time. Um, so we don't actually have to instantiate this in any new refactor. We can just inside of the SDK itself, we can use aliases that are dependent on our environment and they'll just resolve the contract ID that you want dependent on the environment. So when we do that, we don't need, we can just import the functions directly and use them right away. I don't know, Shot, you got any questions? I can keep yeah, on like going. How did you, so how did you go from the actual contracts to the SDKs? And like, are you like, can you kind of outline that process? Because it, 
you're making an SDK for each contract, and then how do you know which uh you know which methods to expose um and and things like that? Like how do you actually convert a contract and the the function methods into um into an SDK? Yeah, so it's we can look at this one. Um, I think registry is the most straightforward. So when we're communicating with a contract on boss, we're usually just doing a near view or a near dot call. And then we know what methods are exposed from the contract. So get underscore config, get projects, get project by ID. And then we know the parameters that these contracts would do. So you're doing development of this contract. You're defining this function. And at the same time, you can create this SDK that just really mimics the same functions. So if the contract has a git project, we define the git project SDK function that is just a near dot view to the git projects uh, contract contract method. So like from this perspective of a project, projects basically um they have they have kind of statuses here. So uh is if I wanted to make like a, a method like get project by status, is that something you're doing within the component? Because there's some things like uh status banner and admin dashboard, or is that is that something that you would define in the SDK? Like when do you make the trade-off of like of that? Yeah, so for example, I have right here, I have is pro is project approved that references this get project uh, by ID right here. Um, and then it, it checks if the status is approved or not. So we do expose this function through the SDK. Um, and we can do more, but I think there is like a trade-off. It's, it's when is a method uh, specific and worthwhile to the contract that you want it to be reusable across all these different components or when is it like very business logic specific so something like get all approved or get projects is something that anything will want to use that that is a primitive we should definitely have that in the SDK but something that's maybe like um, get all approved projects, which is dependent on whether or not you are an admin, that maybe is all business logic. So you probably want to, instead of provide a get all approved projects method in the SDK, instead you want to provide a is registry admin function and the get projects, um, which they can then check if is registry admin and then get projects and then filter from there. So, so how, how does the, there's an effect on adding additional methods to the SDK and latency or how does that work? There's, it's honestly, it's not a, uh, there's no problem with latency. It, it doesn't really make any difference um, whether those methods are there. It's more just like a, just design design decision for an SDK. I I think that SDKs should mostly be generic and and really reflect almost one to one what the contract looks like, and then anything else that is an abstraction of that should instead be in the business logic. Um, I think that's a good practice, but of course you could uh, extend the SDK to have all these these functions. It has no effect on latency. Okay, a, a lot of these are like async methods or um view methods. So what do you do for near calls? Like where 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 does that logic live and in actually interacting with the blockchain? Yeah, near call, near async view, and near view are all functions that are exposed through the VM. So what what does that mean in relation to an SDK? Like, um. It means that we can use them. I mean, we can use anything that we, we can, uh, we can use, you know, all the, all the VM primitive social near, um, we can use all of these inside of the SDK. And it's, it's really, we're like adding that layer of extraction so that 
something like near view doesn't have to be used in your code. And we instead you're just using the SDK, which is just a nicer interface. So, so instead so, of having, go ahead. So 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 in in so it's just like so in, for the registry contract, projects can basically apply and register. That's that's the interaction that people are having. Admins they can update statuses and set project statuses. So like, where where does that live? In not the SDK, and if it can live in the SDK, like, why not? I think uh, I think it could that type of stuff. If if that's um, that makes a lot of sense to live in an SDK. The reason it's not in the SDK, it the SDK just kind of reflects what the code looked like at the time when I built it. But um, we can absolutely use. Uh, do you want to actually continue what you just said? So you said uh, apply to registry. What were the what were the things? And then um the update status. I, I forgot the method name. I don't cool. think it's called update status. Let me let me look on the, the contract real quick. Uh give me one second. Closed on my tab. Hotlock.org slash core. And then contract. Yeah, there is the right methods. There is admin set project status. That's what it's called, admin set project status. And apply is register, I'm pretty sure. It's not apply. Okay. Set. Yep, I see. And yeah. So like 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 generally like on the README there is like uh like write methods and there's read methods. So like like in terms of like when you're creating SDK, why not like go through and convert all of them? Like what's what was what was like the like like what caused you to like just do the the uh the read methods? I was just moving. I was uh we used the read methods a lot inside the app. So I just went for those first. Um, okay. That's really can, it. Can, can, can you kind of show examples where like the uh, the register is at now because it wasn't the SDK and how it would look with the SDK? Yeah. So right now, register is inside of project.form. So project, register your project. It opens up create project tab. We can look at the create project tab is right here. That's the route. So it's going to open widget slash project dot create. Project that create has create form inside of it. And then in create form, I'm sure that we'll find our register. Yeah. So this is this is our contract call. Which we chain several we we chain several um transactions together when you register, because you also register on horizon and you follow potluck. So it's in this like transactions array, but this is it. It is register on contract ID. So if we wanted to convert this into an SDK method, all we're doing is inside of our registry SDK, let's call it register, potluck registry args. I think I've asked this before but it's, yeah, it's, it's null because it just registers with the account that's signing. So register doesn't take any parameters. It is a near dot call um, contract ID register, no parameters, but we do need to pass in a deposit. Uh, 
I got I got checked something. I think it's that. Interacting with near, near call, parameters, cast, deposit. It's just like that. So now, so in, so so you just added a registry for the SD. So the uh, the reason why that's there too, there there's also like just the people that are understanding the registry contract. Like as an as an admin to a registry, uh, you can actually add people without them applying as well. So that's why it kind of defaults to null. We don't have any views or UX in the application, but just uh, kind of uh, uh, looking at that, that's that's the that's thing that we have. We're actually working on a way to uh, make your own registry pretty soon too. Um, and it's more like, it's more like cur curated list that can be applied. Gotcha. Yeah, it looks like it optionally takes a project ID. So you can just pass in props like that. Um, cool. Now we're gonna have to do some thinking since it like chains them together, but we can just we can just you know do something now, um, which would just be so we already import the potluck registry right here. We're gonna import the register function. We're gonna default it just in case. And then inside of here, we're gonna do register. And that's really it, since we're not passing any args arguments. Let's try it. We can make this faster too. You see how as we're typing, it's refreshing, it's rewriting the whole thing. So there you go. Um, oh, this is the app that's still using the existing. I thought it was index. It's app. Um, in the refactor I've done, I've just I've set it as app just so that I could keep it separate for now. But we can rename it to index when we're ready. There you go. So that's calling the social. Is why why is it just register? Is there not like a potluck SDK dot register? Well, why can you just do with a standalone method name? You can do it either or. It's because of how I imported it. 
So I imported it deconstructing as this register, but you know, you can import it as potlock SDK equals VM require and then you know the SDK registry. And then you can do potluck it like uh dot register. That's fine too. Okay. It's just, it's just preference. All right, yeah. There 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 may be the same method in different uh contract names. Like one thing. But uh oh, why isn't it working? Um let's do this. So there's just a simple button that's using the register. Uh, What's up with this gas? <laughs> I don't know. Is that what you guys usually do? No, just the gas is like dirty, man. That's like fifty million. That's that's hot. Um, does it go gas then deposit or deposit then gas? That could be it. Wait. You sure. I'll say it's CGA thirty. I just know it's not that that much. Let, let me let me go register a project right now. See what's up. I go to Thirty, thirty, thirty. Yes. That that was that was hard before it was calculated. Um, register was. See, transactions that. It just uses use standard. For that, yeah, okay, so it just it um, there you go. Well, what about the deposit? Like I'm looking at it right now. It's like deposit point oh five near, but I mean, I mean, generally, how are you? How are you looking at? Because there's already existing code on the front end. So like, like, what, what do you, when you, when you, if you look at the legacy application, like, what are they doing, and then how are you translating that to to the SDK? Well, there's a few things that are going on here. It like, uh, I got to close it. So it it does a lot of things. Um, 
be async view to get account, which we don't really need to do. We can fix that. Uh, and then we chain all these transactions together. This one has the deposit that it passes and then it has gas as null. So I'm just, I was just replacing this individual transaction that gets pushed with the SDK method. We're going to have to think a little bit harder about how we can chain SDK method calls together. But I know MintBase has done, has this like execute command, which I'm sure we could pull that same pattern. So maybe we want, we want to do like a, um, I don't know, a, not a near SDK, but we could, we could make another SDK that, that defines an execute function that we're able to mix together objects and, and, and SDK function calls. Um, and then I, I think the, I'm, I'm screwing up passing uh deposit into this function. Um, the documents, the documentation doesn't show which parameter comes first or last. I don't really know where I have an example of this. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, there you go. Um Um, I don't know. What next? Yeah, I mean, so like, how did I make it faster? Or is it just uh, cleans the code up? It just cleans it up. It the uh, uh, old potluck has had um, it literally it, it worked as. It was like this big long index. It's it's smaller now, but it's not even as small as it could be. We it used to it used to have like everything was defined here, just huge. You like register or not even register, but it it just like every single item was it was defined here, and then it was passed as props into each thing, and then each component and then each component would have components inside of it and it would pass as props down into all of them 
um, using it as a module, building an SDK makes it so that these functions, I mean, we're slowly ch chipping away from stopping passing everything as just prop drilling through and instead only just using the module, the SDK, when you need to use the function. And it's nice to use the SDK because um, otherwise you could have, I don't know, you could have, for example, Git projects. Git projects is is a near dot view, you know, on the on the registry contract that is used multiple times throughout the app. Changing it to a SDK, now you only have one source of truth uh, rather than if you needed to make a change to the function, then going through and updating all these near dot views, you just replace it with the SDK method, get projects, and then inside the SDK method, get projects, you just make the change. So this change is then reflected everywhere else. Okay, so like, how so, so I mean, really, there was a lot of like bugs in the application, and it was slow. There's hot flashes. There's loading nipples, and you were kind of moving through a methodology of like, all right, fix what's broken, but kind of with a like a a methodology of like build SDK from scratch. Like, how would you kind of do that differently? Good question. Okay, if I were to do it from scratch. Um, and I think magic build would work really well with this because they already have a lot of this infrastructure in a way. But, uh, you know, look at look at the contract. If inside this contract we have, um, you know, directly from the contract, we have this git projects, we have register. Let's just take those as two of them. This is potluck registry contract. Um, that's totally wrong. But anyways, directly from the contract, I would make an SDK that uh, exposes that one, does a one-to-one -one mapping of all of these methods. So get projects, register, project, et cetera. And then also the helper functions that you described that you really would like. So maybe it is you, you said, uh, or update project status. Update project status, you said used a uh, method that is here that was like, yeah, update project status, I think. So we would do, we would define, uh, so we would do like a one-to-one -one mapping of the contract methods to now an SDK methods, this, this VM required module. Um, and then, yeah, any helpers. So maybe there is a helper that is uh, approved project, which looks like update project status, uh, project ID approved. I, I would de design from scratch um, the methods that are one to one map from the contract and then any helper methods that use these one-to-one -one maps um, in order to, yeah, provide the better experience for anyone that's building using potluck registry contract. Okay. Um, yeah, and this is really helpful because right now we're building an indexer. So all kind of the view calls right now would be switched to an indexer and an API and like with the, with the SDK could easily swap that out versus kind of going through all of uh, the code. Um, on on that topic of composability, and I think like Matt B does this very well. Like he he, I mean he was the first one I see like do SDKs on uh on on Boss, and then also a UI kit on top of that. So how does how does that fit into the into the picture? If you were imagining, all right, now you went through every contract, you have you know a one to one parity plus all your helper methods. How how would you go about now bringing composability to the to the to the styling? Yeah, so uh, okay, so this is like potluck SDK, and then yeah, we can do potluck UI kit, and in the same way that we do this, which this is just like an object, a 
that defines them all, you know, um, the same way that we do this, we can do with potluck UI kit. So what I'm assuming you want something like a donate button. Yeah, like buttons, like like a, like a storybook kind of like a storybook based on boss, really. Yeah. So I would I would, you know, expose like donate button which uses donate me donate method. And then in it, I would give it a class name that is like potluck donate button. Um, on click, it calls the potluck SDK donate, which is something that we would be importing from the top. And then since we're like exposing I don't know, maybe this takes, yeah, project ID or something because you need to donate to something. Um, you can define, you can provide, so here we can create a UI kit that has something like donate button where um, it can, we, it, it's style agnostic. We're not going to put any styles, assi assign a class name to it. And then this class name can be handled in the in the CSS of the app that's using it. So Potluck, you guys have your design for your buttons. But if somebody wanted to use your button and wanted to style it differently, they would also just define the class name here and then put their own stylings. And then, yeah, the on click would be already set up with the SCK methods that we've defined up here. So then when people use it, they would be doing something like donate button from the UI kit. And then when they do donate button, they can even write in, you know, we can pass children. Modules can do that. So donate to me. So now projects can use potluck functionalities, they can use all of it, and all they have to do is just this import and this this tag. So it is composable. It's it's nice in that way. Be really clean. Yeah, and, and, and this this makes it because ideally like this is a permissionless protocol. So like having a model like this like is like would not only allow you to change your own UI kit, but you can also change the contracts. You can deploy your own contracts. So I I like this. You mentioned additions to the boss workspace with testnet and possible like, you know, staging. And so from a development perspective, you make all these refactors, but how would you go about, you know, deploying on staging, like, like setting it up on testnet and then, uh, and then like actually having those like regression tests and like integrating it into this workflow. Like, yeah. So uh, boss workspace, the next version, version one, um, honestly, I'm trying to cut it by the end of the week. Uh, it, in it, we'll see that, okay, so we've got potluck and then we have this boss.config where we define our account, just our main account, but we can also define al uh, aliases and overrides. So, the default is mainnet. So our, our mainnet account is pollock.near, and then we use these al aliases, um, registry contract, you know, these are our mainnet ones. And then we have overrides for testnet and staging. So we set a different account and then we set different aliases. So it, it matches, but it uses testnet uh, contract accounts or, or staging. And then all you have to do, um, 
boss.config will pick these up when you do uh, uh, boss workspace dev network. So it could be testnet or it could be staging. Defaults to main. And typically how we've been doing it is, uh, so these overrides will look at the network that's being passed and then it will do the replacements according to the account or aliases that have been provided to that override. This happens on build. So typically what we would do is we have all these Git workflows. So we would just adjust it that um, keep the app name, but the deploy environment will, will set up a couple workflows. So deploy mainnet and how about deploy staging where they're exactly the same except for this one says staging. Um, we need to update the staging, the signer. I mean, we can, the deploy needs to be updated. Maybe the signer stays the same. Uh, and then there you go. On pushes to, let's say, develop branch, it will build according with the staging overrides, and then it will push it to your staging account. Your deploy account address, and and then on the actual like like GitHub secrets and the and like you're 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 enumerating all the new like staging, you know, testnet, uh, uh, pri private and public keys, or how does that work? Yeah. Oh, so for mainnet and testnet, you'll have to set up um different private and public keys, but in uh for something like staging, since Staging and like production are both mainnet. Um, I'm assuming you could just change the deploy account address and then just have it so that potluck, the core contract, maybe uh, it has uh, a uh, access key that it can sign for the deployment to staging. So you can keep the the single potluck.near private key and public key here, just make sure that it, it has the permissions to sign for the deploy account um, and then you're good. All right, so 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 in this time, a lot of refactors have happened. Like one thing that like, okay, we can have a staging environment, but like how do we begin to automate these tests? Like what 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 does what does that look like? And um, yeah, like how, how would we go about making sure that nothing is breaking without the users telling us. Yep. Okay. So for tests, we can introduce something called Playwright. Um, let's see, what project do I have that has it? Uh, SDK is that near. maybe isn't the best one-to-one -one mapping, but uh, Peter Solomonson had done playwright testing for DevHub. And then we've kind of just like carried it on from there. So playwright tests, what they do is you, excuse me, you write these tests that will open up a page. So it'll open a headless browser um, when you run it. And then it'll like do some interactions on the page. So you can write tests that pretty much like mimic the interactions that users would do. Um, it will boot up a local gateway. It'll do those uh, those things and then it, it may fail or, or whatever. Um, we can write these tests. We would write them for potluck. We would do most all user cases. So um, probably ones that don't actually, we don't need to actually see the signature go through but we could do something like should a uh, user wants to register a new project. So should go to, you know, main page, should click register to project, uh, create new project should show on the screen. Button register project button should load. We can uh, automate in the test it to type in data. So Playwright provides all these like nice helpers for uh, inputting data and fields, uh, we would do the, it would click create new project, and then we could verify what comes up in the modal in the create data mobile. So we could then uh, 
verify it without actually sending the transaction. So we would write a ton of test cases that are like that. Uh, we would want those tests to pass locally. And then inside of our CICD, let's say a workflow when, when deployments happen to develop branch or whatever, we can set up a Git workflow that runs this uh that runs the the tests and then I think that probably has some continuous integration workflow. So like they do every single time that there's a push to main, um it installs dependencies and it runs the tests. Or it runs prettier and it runs the the tests. So if the test failed, then then it won't push the main and and the deployment won't happen. Interesting. So so how, how do you how do you test for things that require transactions? So we can pretty much test everything around the transaction without doing the transaction itself. So we can test everything up until uh you know, we can have it go through this whole process. We can then abstract, we can take all this data. We have that available to us. And then we would just compare and make sure that it matches what we expect. And then I know that there's like callbacks. So for example, if we were to confirm this, we get a transaction hash back and then there's like a modal that pops up uh, because of that. We would then just write a test case that's like um, after project successfully, uh, you could do two different ones, like after project successfully registers or after project signs but fails to register. Um, we know that what we're doing is we're pretty much like loading the page, but pass this transaction hash as props. So we'll load the page with this as transaction hash as prop, because that's what would happen after you've registered. And then like, I don't know, confirm modal appears, success modal appears. And then we can we can do the same thing for uh for failures too, but it's just like a little bit different. So um we're going to load the page with the transaction hash, but we're just going to like act we're going to say uh this failed you know so it should confirm failure total appears so we pretty much get both sides of the transaction um we can verify that the data that gets saved in the transaction is correct and then we can also verify that the outcome after we get this transaction hash uh is is correct too without signing a transaction directly. How do you know you have a like proper code coverage for your front ends that uh uh like how do you how do you, how do you know that you're covering all the edge? Is that like a manual process or can it be automated in some way? Yeah, Playwright has code coverage uh tools. You have like VS code extensions that install with Playwright and um ill actually I think I have it. Although I'm not in one that has Playwright installed, but yeah, you can you can pretty much like actually visualize all the code coverage that you do have with Playwright tests. And also, um, this just made me think of it. So it's also it's pretty cool too. So sometimes you know how we're like writing tests to pretty much mimic what happens with a user. So user loads this page and then clicks register your project. Um, all that type of thing. When you're writing tests, you can actually use some of these helpful tools that it will rec record your cursor. So it will bring up this uh, browser and then you actually, you click record cursor and then it will follow the interactions that you do and write the test to verify. Like that pretty much just like, you know, does what you did. 
it just makes it easier. So you can e yeah, you can either write them from scratch or you can have it record off of your your stuff too. Okay, so what about what about like benchmarking? The original goal was to not only make this composable but make this load faster. So like, what 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 tools do we have to you know uh, benchmark that? You know, I've been kind of looking for a good one. Uh, in the past, the the two things that we're like really looking for is that when you're loading a page, uh, it's this waterfall here. You see how like this one is so long. Um, you can we can record this and then we can like uh, I can't think of the word. Export it and pretty much just compare this waterfall before and after. I also know that there's like online tools, like there's Lighthouse. I mean, the your Lighthouse, whatever is what you're trying to optimize. I don't know. You can, you, we can find other tools that are online that will kind of do this for you and create the report and benchmark it then. So maybe you like benchmark the main app using this tool. And then you also benchmark the staging app to compare the two, since it does have to be pushed online. But I'm still, I'm still kind of, uh, I'm still learning more about benchmarking and still looking for my favorite setup. And then can you briefly go over, because we'll probably have another session with like, when you're saying it's like, what? I know he he worked on he's working on a new thing called the lens. So how does that tie into into this from what you you've learned? I'm not, I'm not sure if it's like too relevant right now, but like yeah, can you kind of explain like the differences and approaches of how his framework versus how you're refactoring? Like, what are the core problems they tackle? Yeah. So what Alem does, so if we like look at the source code of Alem, Alem is kind of like, it, it's it's an extension of Boss Workspace. He, he forked it and then he used the transpilation that occurs in Boss Workspace to instead compile it all down into one file. So that one page is this file right here. And uh, so you, you like, you write your code as typical, but instead of it publishing all these different apps, it takes all these apps and then it, it mushes them in, together into one file. Um, yeah. Which. Has. Um, which is really cool. You know, there's a lot that can be done with that. It's almost kind of similar to what this app module does to in a way, the thing that I really want to explore with Alem is instead of it compiling it all into this one file, which is like, it's not really composable. We can't really do much with it. Um, and it we can, we can, for example, turn a lot of these into modules. So promise, Promiseify is a function that he's written. There's a few functions that are inside of here that get bundled with it every single time. That could be pulled out to a module and it could just be imported instead. So then these bundles are smaller. It also totally relies on state for routing. And I think there's like content-based routing and there's URL, but you see as, as we're navigating, 
it doesn't actually change the URL or anything. It pretty much like compiles into this big, big one big file where state updates, where state just kind of manages everything. Um, I, I was asking him about that. I think that's just the case in the docs. Yeah. Uh, is it? Yeah, I think I think he was just quickly putting some uh, docs together. Cause I, I I I I asked him all of your your concerns, so I'm I'm not too sure if it it does that. Everything, uh, yeah, I think I think he has it. Just needs uh needs to see that, but yeah, I'm gonna just piece he says. Um, yeah, like he said for the doc app, I'm using content based routes. This is why it's not changing the uh url um but uh yeah because that was my main concern i was like all right we need to be able to share urls for the and that it is possible is what he was saying uh um and he said look at the types of behavior section Routes, I think. Oh, you can pass the type of behavior. Yeah, right. URL based or content based. Yeah. Right. So there's a lot of, there there are like there's a lot of similarities here with like the router module that we have here and this. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I I also wanted to get your like perspective like real quick because now we're gonna, uh, just about like understanding pop. Like, there's like the thing of like okay, I'm just refactoring the code. I'm taking the SDK. I'm replacing it with this. But like, what level of understanding of the code that you need, and what kind of like surprise you or you still kind of don't get like. So like people who are like, okay, I just want to build on top of the contracts. They may not even be building on boss. They may be like, hey, I want to build a general purpose SDK and I want to build it in a traditional application, not on top of boss. So like what yeah, I, I that's I kind of want to get your 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 mindset on like looking at it just from like a core contracts and a core protocol perspective and things that like yeah, that like just yeah, your journey there if you can speak on that. Yeah, I think something that would be really cool is if, so we have these potluck contracts, these smart contracts, we can build a, um, you know, we can build a module, this boss SDK, um, but that can also translate to just like a JavaScript SDK. You, it, uh, and then it could be used, the same thing could be used in, in both of them. Um, I think um, trying to build with, with potluck. And can you please, we're, we're adding more contracts too. We're updating past contracts. We have, if you can go to the core contracts on the, on the, on the, con, on the core repo at GitHub, it's like, it's so people get a sense. Cause we only went over the registry, uh, but like there is, you know, direct donations. There is, you know, the pot factory, which deploys pots, which are the quadratic funding rounds. There is, um, uh, yeah, the registry, which we went over. And then there's Sybil, which is, is not a bot. Um, which doesn't really live too much inside of this application. There's a other external application through there, uh, but there's like this kind of idea of like all these can interact with each other. Like a registry can be used as requirements for project applications inside of a pod. Uh, you know, not a bot requirements can be used and interchanged inside of a pod as well. Um, you know, you know, registries we're we're making registries more robust and they can change how things are explored. Um, there is, uh, yeah, like donations, uh, you know, they, uh, we only, we should only show them on projects on the registry, but they can be used 
for anything. So there's like a plug and play of how these contracts are going to interact in the future. Uh, but um, yeah, it, it's it's a lot for a lot of people. But I've been trying to onboard them. So I, yeah, I wanted to get a sense of like how you, how you came to learn about it, or like what questions you had. Okay, got you. Uh I mean, yeah. I mean, I mostly I mostly learned about it as I was just like moving it out to SVKs and how it got used everywhere. So I'm not that helpful there. Um I think that that um I don't know I think that right now right now there's not a whole lot unless you dive into the code it seems but um you know maybe we can use this LMs this documentation thing he built I just close it or right here maybe we could fork this and we can define the SDKs and write documentation around them. And, and UI kit. I think that'd be a really nice next step, honestly. Yeah, these are nice docs. Shout out to Wonderson. I didn't know. Uh... Yeah. I just have a scene. No, Wonderson's incredible. He, his ability to just like, you know, a fully fat packaged thing with, with documentation. And he even wrote like the create LM app and he has these two templates, like his productivity and his like well-rounded. It's, it's really incredible. Yeah. We were definitely going to have, uh, have him on. And now it's interesting to see the evolution of potluck um and a lot of people like have been working contributing on it and yeah um is there anything else you like to add like kind of went over a lot just in terms of like you know creating sdk kind of methodology you know ui uh and and you know how you would do testing and things like that is there anything you'd like to add anything you like to see in kind of the potluck ecosystem or yeah, so what's what's next? What's going on? I've been following a little bit in that chat, but um what so what is this plan for the full revamp, I guess, of potluck? I mean, there is I mean I mean right now, like we have kind of a new designer on board and uh we're we're uh we're right now just like looking kind of through our main pain points and our customer journeys, especially like how do we get more projects to not only register, uh, find opportunities more easily, and um, and then also give updates. And then for anyone who gives money, whether it's a donor or it's a sponsor, like how uh, essentially we can get them to do that and a little gamify a little bit. Uh, but um, there, I mean, there's some limitations right now with you know being able to push notifications to people, um, really kind of in, engaging people in that front. But we're 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 kind of focused on really how do we get donors to you know give money and interact and attest and then how do we get projects to give updates and and things like that and if there's any kind of gamification we could add to that like in terms of like what it looks like for a new design a new iteration that would live on boss and also a traditional app like we're we're kind of on the design phase on a continuation of this application where like we've also done some redesigns there. If you go to the project page right now, you'll see um it looks it looks different. Things are being pushed right now, like as we speak. So uh this is local, but if you go to the project page right now, like we're uh we're like adding some stuff, we're like fixing some social stuff as well. Um and uh yeah, there's things that are in the design process, like campaigns that we're going to be including. So being able to launch like specific initiatives. So if 
but yeah, if you click the page here, uh, and then, uh, so like, yeah, right now we're just working to just like optimize and make things look nicer. Uh, so that that's kind of like where we are at with like the current design and this, uh, and then, and then from a contract perspective, we're adding things like list, um, we're kind of also adding rules to not a bot, uh, right now. Uh, so we can add custom logic for various different stamps and then integrating kind of not about like notifications into the application. Uh, but, uh, that's essentially like, like in terms of like, where's your, yeah, where's, and then, and then, yeah, that's kind of the main things. And then when your sin is looking to refactor this whole application using a lem, um, also on a design perspective, like we're working on lists, but we're all, we're kind of finishing up campaigns, but also uh, the impact page kind of at what like Elijah's working on with the testations, how we can tie that in to uh, kind of like DAP radar and open source observer where we could see open source projects and their impact and any traction that they have and in any attestations in uh, one page. And then there was also like some pot stuff that we didn't really kind of look through like that we're, that we're like kind of cleaning up. So there's a lot of like, improvement of the current ux because we're trying to ship for pots a lot of things from the like that people weren't noticing that like we're we're having to adjust uh kind of redesigns from the current version that we're actively shipping and then uh and then kind of new features on the contracts and then like refactoring that and then there is like okay thinking thinking with these pain points in mind like a complete redesign of the application um Cause we uh we were pretty we we uh we were moving pretty fast and agile and lean, but there is a reality of like where we have you know the build around happening like this Monday we have uh just round rounds till then and people trying to continue rounds so it's like uh, the reality of it is like this is the application and a lot of people are gonna be touching this uh right now but uh like yeah we're plan we're 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 kind of planning that so there's a couple of things happening in a uh, tangent but like the main thing i think is relevant to the refactor like wenderson with alem but the re rest of the stuff most of the stuff the pushes that are happening are uh are really just uh they're really just like improvements to the current design also we're going to be adding a leaderboard here so like like a leaderboard for people who've gotten most of the matching pools uh in the pots and things like that so like little little things and then uh the refactor i'm not too sure like how uh, the lem refactor plays into this refactor or like uh but uh yeah that's that's all i could kind of speak right now on the uh product side so i'm like really kind of thinking through a point system right now i think a way to gamify that and how to design that point system if anyone's out there wants to support it to like game design or anything like that that'd be helpful we're also been building an indexer because that price is accurate what that price is is it's it's the price of how much near a project has gotten multiplied by the current price of near and that's 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 highly inaccurate um actually and so we're uh we're adding also fungible token support uh right now but we're also uh working on an indexer that uh takes in the price at the time so we can add more meme points because I know there's a good hefty chunk of meme points that want uh to be supported and then there are kind of existing applications you know like the Magic Bill guys were working on a way to like do AI searches for the projects um, and then fund directly there, like kind of different bills there. Uh, and then there was someone who did that for Gitcoin. He wanted our data as well. So there's going to be like some like small different like kind of bills. And like there's some people that are going to be working on like invoice gaps. You put the transaction and then they generate the invoice. Um, another thing that I want is like really tap into like 501c3 donations so like we need to have like a verification service low-key uh so i've been looking into that heavily and gotcha. uh so that when you have this receipt you can actually kind of get a tax write off but it's nothing it's nothing too crazy in terms of like the overall like features but uh yeah but like i would say list is the most immediate thing improvements to dollabot and then uh campaigns like from, from what i've been hearing in eat denver like people want specific campaigns right now projects are like hey i'm gonna use all this money to pay for gas but it should just be like a shard dog is like raising a gas campaign um yeah. 
And so, yeah, we need, that's kind of like what needs to be shipped. And then we need to write tests because we don't have any tests. So I still owe you on enumerating that, but that's the overall, yeah, that's the overall product perspective in terms of like what we're funding in the pods. It's pretty lit. Like the hundred K that near foundation put up, it's like 200 racks now, you know? So yeah, no, it's seriously, it's a lot. Yes, it's it's lit, it's lit. So yeah, the 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 build out round is is better, but we're just yeah, we just need more pots and uh and we're going towards like different funding sources. We have some interesting things in the pipeline and in creating some, you know, documentation and some tutorials for actually people to run their own rounds and starting to uh seed uh kind of different programs and, and different managers. The creative DAO round happening out, they're getting also paid out too, which started at 10k. It's over at 23k now, like Vietnam is estimated at 10k, like five's got like 5k. So uh yeah, projects are getting more than than I expected on here. There was this feature that we didn't communicate correctly on a UI UX side. It was like challenges because uh calculations happen off chain and then you could challenge it. And if if they accept or reject the challenge, like if they accept it, it'll take another cooldown period to kind of communicating that cooldown period, but even in the future, making it so you can add transactions that were missed, you can ban per certain people and then recalculate is something uh that we haven't designed for that we're about to uh design for. But yeah, most of these things I'm I'm gonna put in the newsletter. Uh that's our that's that's our official update. And then also when the indexer comes out, uh because yeah, I'm not updating really any parties or any uh anyone who wants to support. I'm more like look at the newsletter and then hopefully when the index is done, we can have a Twitter bot with our just like how many humans verified, how much donations come in, how much sponsors come in. And it can be um it can be more streamlined that way. Uh but yeah, yeah. Also, I like another experience that's very underlooked that like people can make money off referrals like instantaneously off this is like off anything like they can it's all optional fees but people can raise for bringing sponsors in to create this round people can raise for bringing donations in or or sharing their project and that kind of deep link is held so yeah i think i think we need to double down on actually like the virality of like people bringing in uh bringing in the uh funds and stuff like that and then also uh figuring out more ecosystem incentives for how to uh, really motivate people for wanting to donate. So yeah, that's, that's another thing, but yeah, big shout out to retroactive builders. If you build something that you haven't been compensated, like that's a really good time. There's over 60, 60 K right now for quadratic funding. Again, that's starting on Monday. That's a two week period. Um, and yeah, it's pretty incredible. Like seeing more donations come in and like, I like, uh, I I was I was seeing people like one donation it would change by three hundred four hundred dollars which is like which is pretty uh substantial so Seriously. yeah yeah I'm definitely I'm I'm excited for when this application period is over to start seeing donations come in yeah, who who who's on it right now because these are these are a lot of tools we use actually at, at build a lot of build out builders. So Boss Mobile, shout out to Vlad's crew, SDKs. That's also being you. Shout out to Shard Dog. That's you. <laughs> uh, Ar Archetype. Shih Tzu, they're building a launch pad. Magic Build was also mentioned there. They're they're cooking up some exciting things. Uh Hyperfiles will be using them for attestations. They they Guven Kaya built the security and audit, like the security uh course on near, and they actually like hooked us up with the audit uh right. so yeah they're they're they were the first audit for our all of our contracts actually um and then yeah near badger they're actually we're using them for for not about uh so shout out to them there should be new verifications coming soon the potluck bot this is how y'all even know that uh you know you got accepted or not or who's donating so who else is on here is these the only ones that got approved yeah who, yeah, who, it's not, who, who, it's who not anymore. Far. I know, I know. Peter was doing it from Git Wasm. If you look at applications, you can see like, yeah. you, you know, you know, you can approve applications. Right. No, I think after this call, I'm gonna go through some. Yeah, it looks like WebAssembly. And your Chan, Forefront. Yeah. This is a uh, Forefront talk. Is the uh, 
is the data dashboard and stuff that uh that home yeah. was working on. Okay. Yeah. Then friendsly the social graphs unify. Okay, mons mons is on here with the OG components library. There's a bunch of oh, okay. uh web four just got out of the registry, but they did apply. I think Nico actually open sourced their airdrop tool just to get on here. I was oh, like, really? Yeah. yeah, I was like, not a public good. Okay, then Wasm Git just got out here. So yeah, there's still there's still a bunch of people that uh I know I was trying to get I was trying to get Morgan with his Unity SDK from back in the day. Uh, there's there's a whole list. Oh, there. nice. Yeah. So um yeah, I mean if you have a if you have a project, if you're a builder, because you probably are who would watch this whole video if you're not a builder, <laughs> you know, but uh definitely apply to this. Um and yeah, and hopefully more to come. Uh, but this is pretty exciting experiment that the near foundation is is messing with. And yeah, like near price goes up so does so does the the pot as we see so um yeah it was like eight seven or eight dollars at the time where we're, we're saying this so all time highs 20 i normally don't talk about price just for legal reasons but like like you gotta be like the, we're, the, we're we're only advertising 60 30 because that's the current price of deer and it's um yeah so yeah no seriously this ai public goods one is looking insane <laughs> a lem ai yeah where do they you know some people just be calling stuff ai too i'm like are you just searching like are you what's what's ai <laughs> what's what's ai they might have been confused i don't know i gotta i gotta release some comms around that actually too i didn't release proper comms on the specific round in general but We'll get to that. And if you want to run your own round, if you want to reward citizens on near, if you want to, like, they don't have to be a public winner on the registry. Like, that is, can be configured out. It can just be open applications. Uh, Yeah, you just hit us up to do that. Uh, We'll we'll, we'll show you, we'll show you the button. The button is <laughs> right now, but there's a button that lets you do that. Um, And yeah, you can run your own round and we're working on some guides for people um to streamline that. So yeah, out here cooking up public goods. Uh, oh thanks. yeah, yeah. Thanks so much for coming on, Elliot. As always, uh, yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me. I think I'm looking at this, and I think I'm gonna play around with some code right now, and uh, see, so I'll try and uh, yeah, focus on some of this flow. All right, man. Thanks so much. Peace.